All right. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Rachel Hodgden, and I am the president and CEO of the International Well Building Institute. For the next 20 minutes or so, we'll be talking through how the New York Yankees are getting their players and fans back into Yankee Stadium safely. Joining me for this important discussion is Doug Behar, New York Yankees SVP of Stadium Operations, and Paul Shiala, founder of the International Well Building Institute. Before we get into it, I want to remind everyone that we want to hear from you. So please use that text chat to the right of your screen to post questions and engage in the discussion. And we'll incorporate as much as we can from the chat into our session today. Meanwhile, if you haven't responded to that poll question yet, now's a good time to do so. It's really exciting to be here today in this moment, along with some of the world's most influential voices who are defining all aspects of the future of work. If this year has shown the world anything, it's that our health and safety are directly linked to how we design and operate our shared spaces. The places where we live, where we work, and for today's conversation, where we play. This realization is how the well building standard and certification came into being seven years ago and how we were in a unique position to respond when the pandemic hit. Paul, can you talk about how real estate intersects with health and well being? and why having the confidence to get back to business is really more important than ever. Uh, absolutely, thank you, Rachel. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, at the International Well Building Institute, we've been merging the health sciences with the building sciences for almost a decade uh, and spent uh, about half of the first, uh, first 10 years, about five years on pure research, uh, really getting all types of great folks across uh, the health sciences, doctors of different disciplines, what have you, to work directly with real estate professionals of all types, owners, operators, developers, architects, designers, engineers, HR professionals, and, and facilities to best understand our indoor environment and its impact on the human condition. Uh, bottom line, everything that surrounds us matters. Um, and we are spending over 90% of our lives uh, inside, indoors, in type of inside of some type of structure, even a stadium, for instance, has a lot of uh, indoor components to it. Uh, so with all of that work um, and a lot of extensive research on everything you can imagine uh, that surrounds people uh, indoors, air quality, water quality, lighting, thermal, acoustics, biophilic elements, mapping them directly to our respiratory, cardiovascular, immune, cognitive, digestive, and sleep health outcomes, we launched the Well Building Standard uh, in 2015. That kicked off a global movement of the well building uh, movement in general. And then to Rachel's uh, point, uh, we're positioned uh, in, a, in a place to help uh, earlier last year with the onset of the pandemic and the elevated pathogen concerns. Uh, we moved quickly uh, and assembled thought leadership across hundreds of virologists and public health experts, behavioral scientists, got them together uh, in our forum took the structure of the existing well building standard and created the newly designated well health safety rating, a third party verification of operational protocols, managerial guidelines as it pertains to health and safety. And uh, really proud to um, uh, be part of, or at least on the side of a solutioning uh, effort during this in, in, uh, in a time. And certainly have seen the well seal and the well health safety rating adopt uh, rapidly and globally since then. Great, and we're gonna talk about that adoption in just a moment, especially in the sports sector. One of the earliest adopters of the Well Health Safety Rating was Yankee Stadium. And I cannot think of an organization that has the kind of universal influence that the Yankees do, or for that matter, who had more at stake when the pandemic hit. You had to protect invaluable talent, look for ways to help thousands of fans get back into the stand safely and showcase that hallmark Yankees leadership. So Doug, I can't even begin to imagine what your year has been like. Tell us how the pandemic has affected operations in general and what steps are you taking to prepare for opening day one year later? Sure, uh, thank you, Rachel and, and Paul as well. It, it's, it's, this journey began close to 13 months ago. We, we um, got shut down sports in, in March of last year and followed very closely. Uh, every aspect that we can. Um, we try to evolve and, and work and collaborated with all those that we could um, and got to the point where the, the timing, Paul, as you, you outlined very well, 
the, the well health safety rating was vitally important for us to, to look at as um, a, a critical piece of, of opening and, can, and staying open in the, in the healthiest and safest way that we could. In what we do historically, we don't look at, we never had to look at viruses and pathogens and things of that nature. We looked at guest relations and security and, you know, your typical venue operational experiences. So who better than to, to lean on was the folks that, you know, the, the hundreds of people that you put together that, that created this process. And for us, uh, working through that and and giving us some high level of confidence to be where we are today, still evolving, but knowing that we've we've taken the appropriate steps to to open on Thursday in the in the healthiest and safest way that we could. Mm. Doug, I want to get back to the Yankees story in just a moment, but first I want to check in on the poll results. So let's go ahead and see what came back to us. How do you plan to guarantee to staff, customers, and partners that your facilities are safe? So uh, it's, it's almost even, 30, 31% or so say they're still making plans. 31% uh, or so says they're seeking third-party certification. And then uh, about 38%, so just edging it out for the win, communicating steps taken, so really being proactive around communications. Um, Doug, I wanna come back to you for, for a moment um, and talk about the way in which you've been activating Yankee Stadium as a front line of defense in the fight against COVID-19. So Yankee Stadium, as I understand it, has been a vaccination site for Bronx residents since February 5th. I can only imagine that your ops team has been stretched to the max. Tell us what it's been like to have the stadium act as a healthcare provider in and of itself. Sure. It, you know, it, it's been very rewarding, to, to say the least. Um, we, when we were presented with the opportunity early on, um, our ownership said, you know, if we can make this work, let's let's make this work. We, you know, being good community partners has always been important to us. Um, and, you know, so we, we took that opportunity and by Thursday, we hope to have uh, given 80,000 shots and vaccines uh, to, to folks in, in the Bronx uh, who, who desperately need it and, and seeing them, uh, their emotion of, of getting the vaccine and feeling that higher level of confidence has is, is been very, very rewarding. Uh, and at times we've actually operated the site 24-7. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been uh, quite the undertaking. Quite the undertaking indeed, that's incredible. And it's been so exciting to see sports stepping up to the plate like that, couldn't, couldn't resist the pun. Um, Paul, coming back to you for a moment, across the country, stadiums and arenas everywhere have initiated similar health and safety efforts to what the Yankees have done. And more than two dozen stadiums and arenas are enrolled in or have achieved the well health safety rating and are making sure that employees and fans are aware of all the work that they're putting into it. I'm curious to know if you think the Yankees leadership has had some influence on that and how influencers, no matter what kind of business they're in, are important to helping us get back to business with confidence. Uh, there, there's no question, uh, you know, leading by example. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put my status as a Yankee fan aside for a second. Uh, the New York Yankees, uh, obviously, are just known as a preeminent and world class sports uh, and organization. Uh, and to see the leadership that the Yankees took early on, uh, by the way, to be first um, uh, through the gates, if you will, in achieving the rating, uh, set a great example uh, for not only the sports world, sports arenas, venues, what have you, uh, but as all other typologies um, have really started to take this up. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see, you know, places like Morgan Chase putting the well seal on all 6,000 bank branches and global offices and T-Mobile retail stores, Brookfield properties, uh, we're seeing everything from a nail salon up to a stadium uh, and everything in between uh, achieve that third party verification uh, and the health safety seal. Um, and, you know, having organizations like the Yankees uh, really lead and do that first sets the bar uh, and sets yeah. the bar for others. And, and it's important because the messaging here is key. Uh, in fact, uh, we took a, a lot of effort um, and put a tremendous amount of resources behind uh, the messaging of that well seal felt it was very important to combine people of reach and influence with people of science and credibility 
to educate the general public, um, uh, to elevate the consciousness of what that well seal symbolizes on the front door uh, of any facility. Uh, so we got some great folks involved in a kind of a public service announcement type of campaign that is uh, already launched nationally uh, and will go global, uh, expecting billions of media impressions in a look for the well seal campaign. Great ambassadors like Lady Gaga, J-Lo, Robert De Niro, Deepak Chopra, Michael B. Jordan, uh, 17th U.S. Surgeon General Richard Carmona, uh, you know, the doctors uh, and the folks of, uh, of, of reach and influence coming together uh, to educate the, the, the general public. But there is no question the leadership that the New York Yankees took early on uh, really set the bar. Mm, absolutely. And that is a jaw dropping list of celebrities for sure. Um, Doug, will the fans recognize the Yankees' commitment to their health and safety as soon as they enter the stadium? Will it be visible to them in certain ways? And then I'm going to make this a double uh, a double hitter. So um, also want you to tell us a little bit about the lasting impacts and permanent shifts. How is that sure. going to impact the overall experience with the with the stadium? So absolutely. So I, there, there will be plenty of visible uh, indicators of the, the, the new way we are operating, uh, signage, distancing, communicating, uh, you know, on our jumbotron, any way we can to communicate the right messages. Um, you'll see cleaning and disinfection taking place throughout the stadium, all in a safe way. Uh, but there are also things that they won't see, right? All the training that we did behind the scenes, all the communication we did behind the scenes to make sure that staffs knew uh, how to appropriately use PPE, how to wash their hands correctly, how to uh, use the right uh, safe chemicals when they're cleaning and disinfecting, because it's all about the human health as well, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's that, that plays a vital role. So there are things uh, you won't necessarily get to see. And, and from that end, we feel this is, this is a forever type of process, right? This, this goes beyond COVID. Uh, viruses and pathogens exist. How do we how do we continue to handle the, them in the in the safest, healthiest way possible? Uh, so you know those programs, the communication programs, the uh, how we treat them, the quality of our air, and all those things uh, will will stay a, a vital part, the most critical part of our operating procedures moving forward. Mm. I want to bring in a related question from one of our audience members, John Galina. Apologies if I didn't get that pronunciation right. Um, wants to know in particular what kind of changes you're making to how concessions are going to be delivered. Are people still going to be walking down the aisles, for instance, um, selling different concessions to the fans? How's it going to change? So there won't be vendors going into the seats because it's important to keep the distancing uh, especially in the seating area where uh, it's the one place where uh, fans can, can if they're actively eating and drinking, don't have to wear their face covering. So, uh, but the concession stands are open. There's, there's plenty of PPE, pl distancing, signage, sanitizer, all of those things that we've come accustomed to. So it should feel like a regular ballpark experience. Nice. Um, Paul, tell us a little bit about, you know, from your perspective, what have we been learning right alongside these sports teams? What do you think are the permanent lessons that we'll be carrying forward across the entire sports sector? Yeah, I think, um, you know, whether it's sports or, or all sectors for that matter, you know, one, one lesson that comes out of this, and if there is a, any good that can come out of a horrendous uh, year in, in, in the past, is an elevated understanding of some pretty basic things uh, mm -hmm. that what surrounds us matters uh, you know, what we touch matters what we breathe matters how we gather indoors matters and through heightened uh, times of pathogen concern obviously I, I believe that we have learned now okay these are certain elements that can be put in place to uh, regulate or to to, to 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 assist during that time and then through other times um, you know if we can look at this as well, there is a deep connection between the air we breathe and our respiratory outcomes. Uh, even if it's not a life or death situation uh, with regards to a pathogen or a global pandemic, but recognizing that the elements that surround us matter uh, and that we can improve and elevate what surrounds us to elevate our life is actually uh, a lesson to be learned. Mm, terrific. 
Doug, um, I'm uh, I'm curious to know about how the efforts that you've made in the stadium to advance health and well-being either move in concert with or tug against your environmental commitments. I know that that's another place where the Yankees have been leading for a long time on green building strategies, energy efficiency, for instance. And I've definitely heard um, this this fear that bubbled up, especially within the environmental community, when we're telling people like run your HVAC systems all the time, open the windows, even if the heating is on, that there was this concern that somehow those goals were at odds. What's been your experience at the stadium? I, I think initially there was a little bit of fear that there could be some competition between the two. Uh, but when you sit down and think through and you engage the right people, you find that when you operate efficiently, whether it's with your mechanical systems, uh, you could still accomplish the, the wellness that you need and, and still be do it in a sustainable way. Um, all the little things, even from how we clean and disinfect the products that we're using, we're making sure that uh, they're either from recycled materials or, or can be recycled uh, and, and still meet the agenda. If, if, if that's part of the conversation all along, it's easily incorporated to the things that we need to do for health and safety. Mm. Paul, I'd, I'd love for you to weigh in on that same front from a cross-sector sort of global perspective. What's your take on this, um, the, the relationship between the health of people and the health of planet? And how does that come down to specific strategies in the building? Yeah, they simply go hand in hand. Uh, we've seen the green building movements and the well building movement uh, become perfect complements uh, of each other. And since launch of the well, building standard in 2015, uh, you know, 1.7, 1.8 billion square feet in 81 countries of well-certified, well-rated or registered real estate. Uh, we see uh, the majority of these projects achieving excellence in both green ratings, uh, LEED certification as a, for instance, and well certification. So they certainly uh, in our minds don't compete. They're very complementary uh, and a holistic understanding of sustainability certainly needs to involve not only planetary health, but but people's health as well. Mm. Doug, um, one of the traditions that we've adopted at IWBI during our webcasts uh, is to ask participants about what the silver linings have been of COVID-19. We're all about keeping it positive. And I'd love for you to offer up some insight as to what you think some of the silver linings are will be to sport. Sure, I, I, I think the whole approach to to how we operate in, in every way, and, and that's not just as the venue, it's, it's, it's the team, how we travel, how we um, gather, you know, how we clean and disinfect, how, how we make the environments we create, work, live, play in, um, have to be and should be um, looked at differently. I, I think we, we kind of, uh, took for granted uh, a lot of those things before this. Uh, and again, this goes beyond COVID. The, the, you know, viruses and pathogens unfor unfortunately exist. Uh, so let, let's keep continuing to create the, the, the right environment that people's health and wellness uh, are at the forefront. Right. It's so important to be prepared for whatever is around the corner. If COVID has right. taught us one thing, it's definitely that. Paul. Over to you, what about silver linings, um, whether it's for the healthy building movement um, or for the business that IWBI is in, talk about what you see will be some of the lasting takeaways on the positive side of the pandemic. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Doug makes a great point. And, and, and look, this pathogen concern will come and go um, and others will come and go. And this is about preparedness, uh, better preparedness for all types of health and safety concerns. Um, uh, so I, I think that is an exercise that people were forced to go through and will be much better prepared uh, for future events, number one. Uh, and then again, broadly speaking, you know, having uh, uh, looked at this for a decade uh, and having a great team, Rachel, yourself included, understand the direct connection between air quality, water quality, lighting, thermal, acoustics, biophilic elements, surface and cleaning protocols and HR policies, the direct links to respiratory cardiovascular, immune, cognitive, digestive, and sleep health outcomes. This is a, a way to elevate folks' understanding, again, that uh, the elements that surround us have a huge impact on our overall health and well-being, our prospects for longevity, our lifestyle outcomes, and of course, our chronic health outcomes. So mm. that is a silver lining. 
Hmm. A profound dawning of awareness, perhaps more so than we've ever seen about the impact of the places and spaces where we live our lives. Thank you. Thank you to Paul. Thank you to Doug. I think we can all agree that sports is a critical part of the fabric of our lives and that the fan experiences is really unique in terms of our culture. Um, and that makes it all the more important that we do everything that we can to get back to the business, especially when that business is baseball. So we hope that you get a chance to check out IWBI's booth in the expo area and to learn more about the work that we're doing. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, please click on the main stage button to the left side of your screen and tune into the next session.